What in the world is Leak the Analyst? Voting machines get hacked at DEF CON in a matter of minutes, and Broadpone patches are now available for mobile devices. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for August 1st, 2017. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I obviously lost my voice during DEF CON, so if I sound kind of weird, that would be why. Real quick, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell button to see the show as soon as it goes live, and check out patreon.com slash threatwire to see how you can support the show. It's a really great way to support all of your favorite podcasts, and now on to the news. A senior security analyst at Mandiant, a security firm based in Virginia and owned by FireEye, had a breach of his personal accounts by anonymous hackers. The information leaked via Pastebin and Mega Uploads included the analyst's login details, contacts and correspondence from emails, internal company documents, and screenshots from his Windows Find My Device geolocation tool. The attacker also broke into the analyst's LinkedIn page. Since the breach was to personal data for a high-ranking employee of a security firm, the attacker also claimed they had gained access deep into the company's internal networks since 2016. Now at this time, no data has been leaked from Mandiant's servers, and Mandiant claims that their company servers have not been breached. The attacker is using the name hashtag leak the analyst, and as such, it sounds like the attack was a personal vendetta more than an attack on Mandiant. The attacker explained in their leaked data release that they wanted to trash reputations of reputable analysts in the field of InfoSec. This leak shows us that we should be taking steps to protect our own networks as well as workplace ones as some attacks may use personal profiles or details to gain further access to much more private data. And as bring your own device becomes more and more popular for employees and companies, we should take the same precautions we do on work systems for our own machines and networks. Remember that smaller breaches of data could happen to anyone, including top-notch security professionals. This year at DEF CON 25, the convention brought in 30 different voting machines machines to be hacked by con-goers in an attempt to educate the public about ongoing vulnerabilities in voting machines and how important it is to work on making these more secure. The hacks happened in a room called the Voting Machine Hacking Village, where all 30 machines were hacked, some within minutes, others within a few hours. Machines included equipment from Sequoia AVC Edge, iVotronic, AccuVote TSX, WinVote, and Diebold Express Poll 4000. Many of these voting machines are used across several different states and still have similar machines in commission for future voting days. Hacks introduced included the ability to take complete control of e-poll books used for checking in to polling places and remote execution vulnerabilities in the WinVote machine, which is no longer used in elections. This machine in particular showed hackers real election data that was stored on the machine. One attendee hacked a WinVote machine in minutes, with it being reported to press within 90 minutes thereafter. In his case, an exploit from 2003 did the job since the machine was running on Windows XP. Now, while WinVote machines are decommissioned as of 2015, though the company did go out of business way back in 2007, many others are still being used, and they too were successfully hacked. Some machines had publicly accessible USB ports, which could allow an attacker to physically plug in a USB rubber ducky, for example, or alternative devices to install malware or enter in malicious scripts with keyboard injection techniques, allowing them to exit out of the voting software and do anything from play Minesweeper to change vote tallies. Another hacker downloaded Media Player on the device and then proceeded to play Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up, which basically rickrolled the entire con. All of these machines were purchased by DEF CON or supplied to the convention for the event. Organizers simply want to raise awareness of vulnerabilities to election systems that could potentially harm a country's election process. The village should be around for the next three years as well, giving hackers a chance to reverse engineer several different voting machines and hopefully continue to educate the masses on what can happen if these machines are abused. Now, in the US, voting machines get certifications through the Election Assistance Commission and and certs cost over $1 million every single time. Most machines are compliant up to 
2002, although several have not been certified since. How many of each type of voting machine is currently being used has not been reported on, but the hope is that by finding these vulnerabilities, machines will be more secure in the future, so trust would not be lost on them. Lastly, a vulnerability in iOS and Android phones, plus many other devices, has finally, finally been patched thanks to Apple and Google. Dubbed Broadpone or Broadown, the vulnerability would allow an attacker to gain root access and use remote code execution technique attacks on devices in their proximity as long as Wi-Fi was being used on the phone in some form factor. Broadpone sends malicious packets over the waves to Broadcom chips that are vulnerable and it rewrites their firmware. Worse yet, the attack is self-replicating, meaning that each device would replicate the attack and infect even more devices. This means that an attacker could remotely own a phone without ever needing to touch it. Broadpone affects any device using Broadcom's BCM43 family of wireless chips, and the bug was first reported by researcher Nite Artenstein before being publicly reported on during Hacker Summer Camp, aka Black Hat, B-Sides, and DEF CON earlier last week. Patches have been released by Google Google as of earlier in July, and Apple as of July 19th, which just so happens to be a few days before everybody started flying to Vegas. The bug affected Android 5.0.2 and up on any device using that Broadcom chipset, and Apple iPhones 5 through 7, plus some iPads and iPods. Affected phones worldwide are over 1 billion, which is more than 80% of the total marketplace. Victims would not need to connect to the Broadpone device, they would just need to have Wi-Fi on for them to get infected. Furthermore, using location services that require Wi-Fi would also make you susceptible to attack. Now, while some carriers may not release patches in a timely fashion, if an update is available for your phone, make sure you install it. And if your device is susceptible to the Broadpone attack and no update is currently available, turning off Wi-Fi and location services will help. Thank you again to all of the wonderful people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. And again, my apologies for my voice. I know it is really weird today and hopefully it will recover throughout the week. And I also wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you that said hello during DEF CON. It was really awesome meeting you all and it totally keeps me motivated whenever I get to meet you in person. So please, if you ever see me at a convention, make sure you say hello because I love meeting each and every one of you. We're all passionate about the same thing, so it's great to get to know everyone. Everybody. If you can spare a bit of change, it all helps keep ThreatWire completely independent and ad-free. We now have an audio-only RSS feed, extra content, and early access for our patrons. We might even feature your adorable fur baby in an upcoming episode. And remember, patrons, to share your favorite security-focused news stories in the patrons' community tab to get featured in the show. Thanks a bunch to Desi Matrix, who keeps on featuring tons and tons of stories. If you cannot donate, hit the subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page and use the hashtag threatwire so that we see it and we may even retweet you. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you on the internet. Oh, I can't talk. Oh, I can't talk. Oh, my voice is so dead. It's so sad right now.